Welcome back. Now, in our, uh, our Perth studio is Scott Ludlam. And I, I've got to say, I'm amazed by this bloke. If you look at the West Australian state election, which is uh, the half Senate, which is only, what, 10 days ago, there was an extraordinary result. I know Clive Palmer did well, uh, but the real turnaround in that election was the performance of the Greens. And I think, I, I look, I, I think it was 17 or 18 per cent, I can't remember exactly, but it was a stunning performance. And the beneficiary of that, the, the number one on the ticket who, who got the spot, was Scott Ludden. Welcome to the program. G'day, how are you? I'm good. Now, um, I want to just, just ask you, why such a resurgence? Because the last federal election, it's only six months ago, the Greens yeah. did very poorly indeed. No, we didn't do that poorly. Um, if, you're, if you think back to 12 months ago, um, Christine Milne said our objective, given that we were, we were steering to pretty stiff political headwinds, was to hold all of our seats, uh, including Adam in Melbourne, uh, and maybe pick up another one in Victoria. And that's, that's what we've done under quite difficult circumstances. Um, but your question about what's changed since then, look, we've had seven months of uh, Prime Minister Tony Abbott, not as hypothetical, but as actual, an actual Australian Prime Minister. And I think people have really actually turned against the government. That and the fact that we ran uh, a very strong grassroots campaign, quite old quite old, uh, old fashioned in one sense, uh, tens of thousands of face to face conversations. I think that's what did it for us. Yeah, I, I'm amazed by some aspects of it, I must say. One of them is that you're the only people, I mean, Labor tried to do it and completely stuffed it up, which is a cock up from beginning to end, but you used a state issue quite brilliantly, and that's the one about the shark cull, isn't it? <clears throat> Look, it's a state issue because it was initiated by a deeply unpopular Premier, who's unpopular for a whole range of reasons, as you'll be aware. Um, but then, of course, Greg Hunt gave him a blank check to just go ahead and do it without any Commonwealth oversight at all. And effectively, Greg Hunt should have been doing his job. So it's not strictly true to characterise it as only a state issue because you've got the Commonwealth back in the men uh, and allowing that very unpopular decision to go ahead. And it is a very unpopular decision, isn't it? I mean, you, you really rode a wave on that, didn't you? Sorry, say that again? I said you really rode a wave on that. It is a very unpopular decision so to speak, uh, unpopular and unnecessary. And I think people could see, uh, you know, you've got scientists and surfers standing side by side and saying, this is unnecessary, there's better ways around this. Uh, at the same time as you've got this horrific footage of these extraordinary creatures being dragged, you know, through hooks, through their face, behind boats, and then being shot in the head. Uh, West Australians are seeing this every day. So unpopular, completely unnecessary, and they're trying to double down, actually, and, and uh, extend it out for years and years. Yes, they are. I, I, I read that. Now, just get, going back to my original point, I, mean, I think in the last uh, federal election, the Greens dropped from about 12 and a bit to 10, didn't they? Was it was a, was a drop? Uh, you held we, your seats, but there was a drop in the vote. No, absolutely there was. Uh, everywhere except Melbourne and a couple of very specific areas. So in WA, for example, in Broome, uh, we lifted on our uh, 2010 vote because of the strength of the James Price Point campaign, other things that are going on there. Across the rest of the country, uh, it, was, it, it was pretty hard work. I think here we polled about 9.5%, which is obviously down on 2010. Yeah, and, and uh, it seems to me that Labor's problems and your problems, I mean, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of the gloss has gone off the whole climate change argument. And I continue to wonder why it is that the climate change sceptics and deniers have been allowed to run right, if you like, for the last four or five years. There's, there's almost no effort to argue the actual mechanics, the actual science. It seems to me that all we argue about is, is, is the cuts to emissions, but we don't actually argue about whether there is global warming, you know, whether it's just the oceans, whether it's the air, whatever the argument is. Yeah. There doesn't be anybody out there putting the case. No, there is, um, but it's hard to get airtime. Uh, and I'm, I'm finding it slightly ironic having this conversation with a journalist. If you are are uh, going to talk to Professor Will Steffen or, you know, someone from NASA or someone from CSIRO who works on this stuff for a living and then feel you have to balance that point of view with Christopher Monkton, uh, who's just going to be making stuff up, then people will get the false impression that there's some kind of equivalence or there's still some argument going on. What we need, I think, is just to stop giving these people airtime and get on with the job. What's going to do it for us, quite frankly, I think, is the fact that the weather is now a political actor. We're, we're swinging back into an El Nino cycle. This country is going to cook and people are going to die. And it will be, I think, much harder to sustain the argument that nothing unusual is going on. But see, I think what you've just said is the problem that you have. 
uh, I, I think you've actually, your, your own words actually capture the difficulty. You've just said people will cook and people will die. Now, there'll be those who'll say that's extremist, alarmist talk. Where's your evidence to back it up? And I never hear the evidence anymore. I have it, honestly, Scott, for what, five, six years since I last heard an argument about right. this. Do us a favour, get Professor Will Steffen on your show instead of some other politician uh, next week and he'll lay it on the line for you. We are in steep trouble here. Uh, and I, you know, I don't think I'm being an extremist in just stating the bleeding obvious is that the weather is turning violent on us because we have left this for decades. We've got the solutions right in front of us. That's the other thing that's, uh, you know, that I think is starting to shape the politics, at least here in WA and elsewhere. The solutions are right in front of us. The renewable energy industry is doubling up and doubling up, wind and solar in particular, and new technologies. And we've got a Prime Minister who is trying to actually decapitate the industry and knock it over. So at the same time as we've got temperature rising in the background and the oceans and the atmosphere, we've also got an industry that is raring to go and just needs that support to do the job. But you are going to have very, very big cuts. I mean, obviously, we haven't got any leaks out of, uh, uh, out of the ERC yet, but there's no question that uh, the, 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 whole, um, you know, the, the whole idea of subsidising any of these clean energy things, that, that, that's just going to go. That'll be wiped out, absolutely gone, and it'll be gone well, by maybe. May. Well, maybe. Let's see. Uh, some of that stuff requires passage through the Parliament, and I think the numbers post-July are too complex to call on some of this stuff, particularly uh, with the result that we've returned in WA. Um, but yeah, I know the writing's on the wall. They've, they've elected a, a climate change denier uh, to review the renewable energy target, and a whole pile of people who have basically come through the fossil fuel industry. So we are up against it, but that's why I think uh, people are responding to the sense of urgency that the Greens bring to the table. Uh, this is not an anti-economy message. If we want our economy to remain prosperous, uh, given what's coming down the line at us, we need to get very serious and front up to this problem. Uh, whether that's a matter for the 2014 election, 2016 and beyond, uh, we have no choice but to front up to this fight because the stakes are very high. Now, uh, I mean, do you think it's the case that one of the reasons why you might be doing so well, and it's not just you, because I note uh, that in the um, uh, Nielsen poll that came out in the uh, in Fairfax papers, I think it was only uh, on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, the Greens are back on the 17% around Australia. It's, it's a huge turnaround in a very short yeah. space of time. Is it because you're back to talking about fundamentally green issues? Because I think when you go off the green issues and onto other things, I, I think that's when people start to turn off you. But when you stick to what you're good at, you seem to do better. <laughs> I think we're good at all sorts of stuff. It depends what you define as a non-green non issue. You know, our, our issue and the reason that this party exists uh, is to move us into a world that's decarbonised into what we can make the best of a safe climate and provide for prosperity given some very serious challenges. So I don't know what you would define as a, as a non-green issue. I feel like we've been talking about climate change non-stop since the 1980s. I think in the last year you've talked more about boats than you have about climate change much more actually much more that's because people were dying and they're still dying and to, to my mind social justice is a green issue it's one of our four pillars now we got people killing themselves people being driven mentally ill a thousand children in detention and a guy was just murdered in our care that's a green issue we're going to talk about that uh, until we can bring some change about yeah well, as i said I, I think that's where we might part company at least in terms of of, of, of where you do well and where you don't uh, look a last question for me where is it where is this count at in Western Australia? When will we know who got the last spot and are the Liberals still the favourites? Yeah, they are still the favourite. You might have seen Senator Louise Pratt from the ALP effectively conceded today, which is tremendously sad. Um, she's a mate of mine, she's been a good advocate for WA and she deserved another term. Uh, the Liberals haven't uh, read their press statement, they haven't acknowledged the win yet, but the gap is actually widening and it looks very, very difficult for Louise to come back. And Labor need to take a good solid look at themselves to see how this could have happened again. Indeed, Labor's going to have to do that. I'm not sure they're capable of it. Scott London, I really appreciate it. I haven't actually spoken to you on this show before, but uh, with your cooperation, I'll certainly do it again. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been nice to chat. Thank good you. on you. Take care. Scott Ludlam, Senator Scott Ludlam, I should say, in Western Australia. That's all there is.